All right, everybody, I have the lovely flower princess, Kate Kennedy, in front of me. Kate, how are you? I'm doing good. Thanks so much for having me. Of course. So I actually wanted to, I, I believe I have a screen cap of you on my phone from like a while ago. <laughs> it's going to sound weird. But I remember that you posted on Twitter, I think it was something about like packing your bag for a shoot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you had this whole like organized, like fold out yeah. thing, mm -hmm. and I really loved that. And so I took a screen cap of that because one of the things that I really want to do for my YouTube channel at yeah. some point, and I have 10,000 ideas, and I, yeah. I have and problem. never enough hours in the day. Yeah, right? I have yeah. a problem with that. So I'm like, kind of putting it on the back burner until I get there. But I would really love to do kind of like porn star, like not not tutorials, but like. Like just ask advice. a porn star advice. I was yeah. just talking about this one. Nobody teaches you how to do this job. It's no. not. It's a hard job. You're yeah. your own business, and yeah. you can't go to school for this. No. And I worked behind the scenes my first year in porn. I was a PA. Okay. So I got to see a lot of it, and I'm actually working. I, I'm working on launching a website myself right now, and it's uh, there's a whole section. It's called Mattress Actress 101. Yeah. And that's all what it is. It's just, and I use that post kind of as a test to see if. I obviously don't want to spend all the time creating this content if people there's no market for it. Right, right, right. Um, but I love the idea of being able to help like new girls in the industry and, and just give them those tips of I mean it can be really small stuff, but like your vagina's pH balance. Yeah. You know, like your finances, saving money, um yeah. how, where to get shoot clothes, yeah. How to do like a simple makeup. I was so bad at makeup when I started in yeah. porn. I had to go to the like the benefit counter and have them like teach me how to do it. Yeah. You know, no, exactly. but just stuff like that. Yeah. I think it'd be really valuable for the industry. Yeah, that's yeah. and and my podcast kind of does it I mm -hmm. almost every single episode I have like a girl who gives some yeah. like valuable piece of advice, but it's mm -hmm. entrenched in like a one hour long video. Yeah interview so I would really like to have different girls mm -hmm. do different videos of yeah. something that they think is valuable that they can teach other performers I love so that. that when people come into the industry and they're like I want to do porn what should I do it's like go yeah. here yes. and watch this playlist yes. and like everything that you might have about porn yeah. like is answered in that and I love the idea of making it available to agents so that when they sign new girls like exactly. I, for what I've always wanted in porn is basically to have like a, a handbook yeah you know like I want to have a, like a packet that they could just hand new girls yeah. and if you can't read 10 pages you shouldn't be in this industry yeah well like, you know you, and you there's a lot of people time, who won't read 10 pages and there's also a lot of people who shouldn't be in this industry yes. but you know we can't, you know, we can't prevent say, yeah. that yeah. but I love the idea of just having that as a resource I think yes. it would help a lot it's, it's a hard job yeah you know it's hard and you're kind of out here by yourself and a lot of times, you know, they're, these are young people in this industry, too. Yeah. Um, and it's scary. Yeah. So I think it's important to, like, support each other. I think that it goes so far into destigmatizing porn in general. If yeah. we present a united front of intelligent, creative people that work hard, and there are so many mm -hmm. in this industry, I, you know, I think that makes a huge difference in changing people's minds. Yeah, I totally agree with mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Who are some of the people that you really looked up to before you got into the industry that you thought, like, they're like, that person has their shit together, that's what I want to emulate? Um, in this industry, like, uh, well, Brie Mills, who just walked by us, um, you know, I, uh, let's see, everyone at kink.com I was obsessed with and thought was so cool. Um, one of my first girl, girl scenes was with, uh, Romy Rain. Yeah. And I learned so much. I still, she told me she keeps all of her shoes in a trunk organizer in her car. So yeah. she always has all of her shoes in her car and yeah. you shoot. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. It's I really still smart. do that. So, yeah. you know, people like that. And I, anytime I've worked with people that have been in the industry for a long time, I always learn more. There's always more to, you know, figure out. And, I, you know, I feel like if you pay attention and you watch people in this industry, you really can get very far quickly, yeah. you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So. so you also like to do stand-up comedy on the side. Yes, I do. And how did you get into that? Did you start, did porn start first and then comedy followed or comedy and then porn or? So I wanted to be, ever since I was, I wanted to do comedy since I was 12. I would wanted to be a writer since I was like six years old. My mom dressed me up as Angela Lansbury for like career day in kindergarten. <laughs> <laughs> I really wish I was kidding. It's <laughs> uh, amazing. And I knew I wanted to do that. And I uh, I went to college. I got out of school. I graduated. I knew like a nine to five job was not for me. I hated it. Um, and I ended up getting a, uh, offered a job as a PA in porn. So I worked behind the scenes for a year. Um, and then I just kind of saw porn as, one, I was interested in it. I wanted to do it. Um, I had kind of an idea to write a book about it, which I'm working on. Um, but I saw it as a way that like, hey, I can... Realistically, I only have to work three days a month to pay all my bills. Yeah. Obviously, if I work more than that, it's great. Yeah. But I have another 27 days a month to do whatever I want and pursue, like, creative prospects 
which is really hard as a young person you know, when you don't have a lot of financial means right. to be able to pursue a creative career. I don't have a trust fund. Yeah. Born is my trust fund. Yeah. It's what allows me to pursue things I've always wanted to do, and it's been an amazing journey on the way. Yeah, and yeah. do you live in L.A.? Yes, I do. I live in so, Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. So not only that, but living in L.A. is yeah. so expensive. Oh so, gosh. like, to have a job that yes. you can only do a few times a month and then, like, do pursue other things yeah, do you in this city. Right? Yeah, there, in there's so many inside. opportunities in L.A., too, like, for yeah. whatever you want to do. Um, and it's great, yeah, to be able to, yeah, have a nice apartment. And, you know, I'm not a fancy person, but I have a nice apartment and I can feed my dog and pay my bills and put a little away. And, and I think that's great. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So where, so when did you actually start doing stand-up? I started doing stand-up uh, last year, I think in April or May. And what was your, okay, so, okay, I, so full disclosure, yeah. stand-up to me, it seems to be like the most terrifying thing anyone can ever do. Like. I so I had a terrible experience at summer camp when I was a kid with stand-up comedy. Yeah. I we, it was like the um, talent show. Yeah. And I actually repurposed some really bad jokes from. Do you remember? Like, no, of course you don't remember. Oh my god, you are like half my age. What am I thinking? Okay, MTV's like Julie Brown, Matt Sound Guy. He remembers Julie Brown. Okay. <laughs> So, the redhead Julie Brown, though, not downtown Julie Brown. There was another Julie Brown. It was like a comic. Yeah. Oh, she was. Oh. Yeah. Oh, she's a weird voice, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so, sorry. I know you guys can't hear Matt. But anyway, so there's another <laughs> Julie Brown, yeah. and she was a redhead, and she was a comic. And she had this whole bit about a girl laying topless on the beach with a towel around her, and then, like, a bee jumps lands on her shoulder and then she jumps up and her boobs pop out and I think it was like a, it was an on purpose thing to impress a boy yeah. or something at the time I thought it was hilarious and so I repurposed her joke yeah. for the talent show and I got crickets just crickets and you know those moments yeah. in your childhood that were so painfully humiliating oh, yes. that they stick with you for all time as soon as you said that I thought of like five of them yes, yes. <laughs> they never go away they never go yeah. away that was one of them and since then I've been absolutely terrified of stand-up comedy stand-up comedy and debate because I also failed miserably in a debate class in elementary school I wasn't good at debate either actually and, if it makes you feel better I wasn't, yeah. I, I, wasn't I also don't think we should teach debate to kids because it just turns into who's more popular. That's yeah. who wins. It was just, it was about animal testing and yeah. I was on the anti-animal testing side and my closing argument was that <laughs> if we continue to test on animals, then we'll kill all of them. There'll be no more animals left in the world. <laughs> And people were like, that's not true. Bit of a stretch, bit of a stretch, but I appreciate, you know, I love so, animals too. And, and, and I think even the teacher laughed. So that was another, so those two. So yeah. stand-up comedy and debates yes. are my two greatest fears. So my point is, how is stand-up comedy for you? Is it as terrifying for you as I imagine it to be? I I love performing. I love being, ever since I was really little, I, there's, I... Uh, I was just on Dr. Drew talking about this, actually. I'm not great at reading emotional cues from people, and so I am fascinated by human behavior because I have to really logic my way into understanding how people are feeling, um, which makes, like, a one-on-one -on -one conversation much more difficult for me than being in front of a crowd because I the collective emotion is easier to read, if that makes sense. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and so ever since I was really little, I love being in front of people. I love being on the stage. I felt right at home there. Like, when I always compare, like, the first time I did stand-up to, um, you ever seen those goldfish at, like, the county fair that are in a bag? Yeah. And uh, you take them home and you put them in a tank and all of a sudden it goes whoosh, and, like, yeah. the whole world is so much bigger. Yeah. That's how I felt the first time I did stand-up. Oh, it was interesting. Just the best I like thing. that analogy. Yeah, I just, I felt free and it felt like, I called my mom later and I was like, I will wait tables for 40 years to do this. Yeah. This is the best thing ever. It's the hardest thing I've ever done. It's my favorite thing I've ever done. Um, it's yeah, it's amazing. I I love it personally. I do under I know that most people fear public speaking more than death. Mm -hmm. um, I'm afraid of sharks, but I love stand up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't mind public speaking, mm -hmm. but stand up yeah. to me is terrifying. So do you ever bomb, and how do you handle that? I think really no one, in my opinion, even the people I've seen not do well, no one ever completely bombs. I don't know. 
I hope you like it. Maybe I've not seen at summer camp. So many people. Yeah. Well, you I get, bobbed at summer camp. We all know that. From like a comic perspective, you know, you're always going to get a couple laughs, even if they're pity laughs. And those are the ones yeah. that you cling on to. And maybe something like I've had jokes that didn't work that, or wasn't the right audience for them. Um, and that's always disappointing. But, you know, you take it and you go back and you try to reformulate it or figure out, you know, why it didn't work. Um, sometimes it's just a bad joke. I've had jokes that I loved and worked on for hours and hours and I thought we're going to be so good and they just never worked. Yeah. It's frustrating. Yeah. Um, but it's fun because it's like a puzzle. You're trying to figure out, you know, how to, and you get to make people happy. Yeah. Like what a wonderful thing to do with your life. Yeah. To just make people laugh. Yeah. And I think too, like Seinfeld says this, that a comic's job is to walk around the world and report on it in a way that makes sense to everybody. You know, it has to be universal. So you're trying to get this message across to all these people of different backgrounds that you don't know. And to be able to say something like that and get everyone to laugh at it. Yeah. How cool is that? Yeah, I know. It's really great. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I've definitely heard from people that when you actually hit it and you get everyone to laugh, that there's no other feeling in there's the world like that. There's nothing like it. I mean, it's the best high you can imagine. I just, yeah. I've gotten off stages and been like shaking and crying and just yeah. so... You know, just so there's so many endorphins. It is right. stressful, but you know, and I think too, I always tell people when you're doing a show, people want to laugh. Of course. Nobody goes to a comedy club like, oh, fuck you. Yeah. Everyone goes because they want to laugh. They right. want to be on your side. Right, right, right. You know, you yeah. can get them there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I assume that you talk about being a porn star yes. in your comedy yeah. and you incorporate that kind of stuff. Is there yeah. any like jokes that you've been working on lately that like, you really like that you uh, want to kind I've of run, a, you know, run past us? Yes, absolutely. Okay. I mean, I'll give you my, this is my can, this is my killer. It's okay. one I open with. Do you think that Salman Rushdie was mad that he had to write the entire satanic verses to get a fatwa declared against him when all Mia Khalifa had to do was suck dick in a hijab? <laughs> uh, that's good. Nothing like a good Salman Rushdie joke. <laughs> oh, yeah, that gets him every time. I mean, it's great because even Jihad if people don't know who that hilarious. is, yeah, it's great. Um, so I love that one. I think yesterday I said, because uh, this is our last year at AVN being at the Hard Rock, I really think we should just double down on the clownery and move it to Circus Circus. I feel like we belong there. <laughs> Ain't that the fucking truth. <laughs> oh, my God. So is there anything in 2020 that you're working on that you're really excited about? Yeah, um, I'm launching uh, the website, uh, which Fantastic. is semiprocockjockey.com. Okay, cool. Can you believe that that domain was just available? Oh, my God. I know. Yeah, it's a bit of a tongue twister, so I kind of, I believe it. <laughs> um, so I'm launching that, which is a writing website. It's essays and, and those kinds of articles uh, with advice for porn. It's just mm -hmm. kind of a spot for me to do that. Uh, I just started feature dancing, so I get to go all over the country this year, and I'm trying cool. to line it up to do stand-up while I'm doing feature shows. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, come see me take jo tell jokes on this night, and then yep. come see me take my clothes Close off, off on this night. It's exactly. Like, I mean, could you possibly be the perfect woman? You're sexy <laughs> and you're funny. I mean... Thank you. Will you tell my ex-boyfriend that? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, we'll regret on that. it. And then, uh, yeah, I just have a bunch of more work coming up, and uh, yeah, more stand-up, and it's been great. You know, porn is great. Jokes are great. It's been a really great year. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming by. It was a real pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. It was wonderful to meet you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> can you tell everybody where they can find you on social media? Yes, absolutely. Uh, they can find me at the OG Kennedy on Twitter uh, and on Instagram. The only thing is there's an underscore between the and OG on Instagram. Okay, so the underscore OG, OG Kennedy. Kennedy. Yeah, but on Twitter, it's just all one word. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, and all my links are on there. Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Thank Best you. Best of luck in 2020. Good luck with the stand-up. Thank you very much. Good luck with the porno. And um, I'm sure we'll chat again soon. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. And go check out all the other videos. I film every single one of my podcasts. And if you want to listen to the audio version, I'm on iTunes and all the other podcast platforms. Visit hollyrandallunfiltered.com to find out more.